We had an interesting day at the RDNA 3 announce. Let's, let's dig into this, shall we? I am here on site in Las Vegas and we are now processing uh, essentially what had happened as part of the presentation. Now, to be honest, when I got out, I was super stoked, but that's the thing. You, you always come out of these things. It's hyped. There was a, there was a gentleman with a, with a giant wrestling belt and there was people laughing and all that sort of stuff. But then you kind of get to come out of this and then you get a kind of process. So let's, let's just start at the beginning a little bit and, and just walk through really quickly what it was. And then the second part of this video, I really want to talk about, I had some things that I think they needed to do to be able to just kind of knock it out of the park. And we're just going to kind of see how those things landed. A couple things that got announced, obviously they talked about RDNA 3 and they called it the world's most advanced uh, gaming GPU. The cool thing that, that we saw was their movement from essentially their chiplet design in Ryzen 7000 series and then now moving that into RDNA 3. And they talked a little bit about the architecture, but the big thing here is with their chiplet design was the performance per watt and basically getting a lot of power out of a small space at a very efficient rate. They did say that there was a 54% in improvement, uh, basically generation over generation. So starting at RDNA all the way up to RDNA 3, 54% jump um, above what we saw from RDNA 2. We did ask specifically flat out, it's like, hey, how does this compare to the 4090? And, and they didn't have those numbers yet. Then they got to the point where they announced the two cards and they announced the RX 7900 XTX to 24 gigabyte. Uh, and then they have the RX 7900 XT. Now, the XTX, the crazy thing was, and the thing that literally you could hear like a like a, a gasp from the entire audience is when they announced the set, the XTX at $999 and the 7900 XT at $899, and both will be available apparently with AIBs, if everything goes well from the supply chain standpoint, on December 13th. Now I will say, the cards themselves look smexy. Like, I, and I use that word powerfully because I am uh, immediately started visualizing all the builds that I could build with these cards. Yes, they've got eight pins, there's no 16 pin adapter here, so, and we know that it's the adapters that end up causing fire and there's a lot to still learn there, but honestly, it was because of the wattage as to why we didn't have the need for more than that. Now, we did hear through, um, uh, some of the Q&A that there will be some cards that probably have three pin, three eight pins, etc. So you will see cards that can do more than that. They are not power constrained. Very good price, very good looking cards. So then they went more into the like their chiplet stuff, blah, blah, blah. It's super, super tech dem uh, talking about that. The big thing that we kind of got through this from these earlier stuff was the stuff like the transistors. It's more small, dense, and obviously more power efficient because they got it to like more transistors per area, which was actually really cool. They said that they got 50% more performance per CU. Now somebody asked specifically as part of the QA, how does it work? And they said they didn't have anything to announce uh, at the time. So they, there was some conversations about, you know, uh, FSR and Fidelity FX and all that sort of stuff. But that is all stuff that is coming in the future. And this is where things get interesting. They, the numbers they showed and the graphs that they show, which you're, you're seeing something right here. They said 1.5 times more in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, 1.5 in Watch Dogs Legions, 1.7 in Cyberpunk 2077. We have nothing to compare that to uh, over the 6950X but at the same time, that's a fairly dated card. And when we talk about how that compares to obviously Nvidia's 40 series right now, we just don't have a lot of information. Then they went into the actual wattage. So the XTX 355 watts, which is significantly less than what we're seeing on the 4000 series. And then on the RX 7900 XT, 300 watts. That's the part that actually is actually really exciting. And, and I had some other conversations with like folks like Gear Seekers, we talked with Jay's Two Cents and others. And the thing that I hadn't considered is for people who have two PCs in the home, you know what I mean, or two gaming PCs, that's where something like this is actually really huge. The other thing that was super key is that these are PCIe Gen 4 cards. They are not Gen 5. There will be some, some whole hype about that. I kind of agree uh, with uh, the folks over at PC World that honestly, I don't think Gen it being Gen 4 is that big of a deal. Um, we're not anywhere near filling up that stuff, uh, basically filling up those lanes. And the other thing too is that from a cost perspective, for them to keep the cost where they were, I felt like that was actually a pretty smart decision. They dick some punches. 
is, and, and I thought this was super funny, is they talk about the easy upgrade. In other words, you'll just be able to easily take your card and plug it into an existing system, throw in your eight pins. There's no having to worry about adapters or anything like that. The other thing that was super interesting that they got into was the use of DisplayPort 2.1 versus DisplayPort 1.4. And they talked about high refresh rate gaming at 4K and 8K. And everything they talked is with FSR. So uh, a very NVIDIA-esque thing with DLSS. Obviously they're pushing FSR pretty heavily here. But the interesting thing was is in these graphs that you're seeing right here, they have this line that shows this 240 hertz DisplayPort 1.4 limit. These cards now have the ability to go beyond the limitations of DisplayPort. So using DisplayPort 2.1, though they did save money obviously uh, on PCIe Gen 4, the fact that they were able to um, basically put in DisplayPort 2.1, which was a huge like thing that people complained about, even though there aren't any DisplayPort 2.1 uh, monitors out, and they talked about the Samsung Odyssey, that that's gonna be coming as well. But again, none of these are out yet, so these are things that will be coming in the future that obviously this card supports. After that, it kind of started going into partnerships. Um, they talked about Halo Infinite, like, again, a game that has been struggling, like let's be clear. Uh, the Callisto Protocol stuff, I just don't want that game to look that good because it's gonna be scary as heck. I think one of the things that I'm actually really excited about, all of the things that AMD powers, Steam Deck, Tesla, Xbox, PlayStation 5, that you're starting to see that larger adoption of the AMD technology. And I thought this was actually a really cool part of this presentation, being able to see that stuff in real time and to see that stuff coming out, which is cool. So for a lot of folks, like we've been wanting, like. Market adoption is super important for success here for AMD. Then they announced FSR3, very, very few details here, like how it's done or what it is, if it's like DLSS 3.0 with frame generation, very, very hand wavy and actually dodgy in terms of the questions that were asked there. That's kind of the quick rundown on the presentation. Is this better? Like, all I can tell you is at a price standpoint, absolutely. At a power standpoint, absolutely. From a performance standpoint, None of us have any idea. And I, we talked, like there was a lot of us who were having conversations after this going like, we, uh, this is the first time where I've seen it where there was literally no benchmarks or graphs versus the competition. There was a lot of acknowledgement of it. There was a lot of like snarky, charming kind of plugs at NVIDIA, but we don't really have any direct comparisons. And I know from the event that we're gonna be doing today, um, there is not gonna be anything that we're gonna be able to have more beyond this. So we'll, we'll see some of this later on. Now, I did do a whole video and I said, hey, here's the things that RDNA 3 needs to do to really kind of knock it out of the park. Number one, I think the one thing that they didn't do is they ignored the little guy. I think what we have now is now we have a full picture of everything for the 1% of gamer, the ones who's gonna spend $1,000 or $899 on a card. Maybe it's a bit more than that, but the point being is that for those people who are in the mid-range, looking at the upgrades for the 3060, the 3070, their 6600, their 6650s, we have no idea. We, we just don't, and I really wish that that almost that roadmap had been laid out. So again, we're just kind of in a wait. Number two, improvements to their software. I think I think they acknowledge this. I, to be honest, I, I do know that uh, top level execs did get to watch the video that I released on this. And I saw specific things where they talked about how important they know that their adrenaline software and their stability. Because if you go and look at my videos, look in the comments, most people are really complaining about what may be non, non-realistic fears around Radeon software. So they did acknowledge that and they said that that was very, very important. AMD Advantage, I, I talked about this. It, it came in less than I thought so. Now they talked about an AMD Advantage program for desktops. Uh, it was, I was excited. Like I saw it, I was like, I was looking around like, hey, I called it, I knew they were gonna do something like this. Unfortunately, it's really just AMD Advantage for pre-builds. I did ask the question, I was like, hey, are you gonna make this stuff available for DIY? Um, and they said yes, like they'll, through letting people go to like a Falcon Northwest site or an Origin site and see what these systems have in it. But there's no, performance uplift, like what we saw when they did smart access memory and stuff like that, there is no benefit of having an AMD and AMD system. And I thought that would be something that could really kind of push them over the edge, which is like, why would I choose all AMD? And, and it feels like that was a missed opportunity and something that we didn't see. Uh, number four, they absolutely nailed. Price, $999, fan freaking tastic. Like, as long as the performance actually ends up being there, I think we had, you know, I feel like AMD did a great job in terms of saying, hey, this is gonna cost less power, which does mean less money, uh, and it is gonna be less expensive. So, that's it, guys. I mean, at this point in time, if you were gonna ask, like, Roby, would you buy it? I was like, if, aesthetically? Absolutely. If I was gonna game with two people and in the same room, yeah, this this might seem like a good choice. But is it better? I don't. I just don't know. And that's the part that's really, really hard. So, 
That's it for what we have. There is more for us to see. You guys are gonna to get to see me, uh, you're watching this video, hopefully, just as we're finishing up the live stream here. So we'll talk more, you know, you, you, hopefully you've gotten some more insight over there. If that video is available, uh, you should check it out right here. That is it, RDNA 3, now out. 8.99, 9.99. Love to know down in the comments below what you guys thought. What are, what are, like, what would you, what were you excited based on the coverage and stuff that we're seeing? And what is the thing that would make you want to go AMD or continue to use AMD? Love to know those thoughts down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, you see that like and subscribe button. Hopefully, this video helped you think that this is the kind of coverage that you guys want to do. We love doing events like this. I got, I got Deb over here flying with cameras. I got Josiah doing backflips with cameras. You guys are going to see like dolly shot. I'm just kidding. No, there's, none of that stuff was actually able to make it. But point being, uh, if you want to see more like this, make sure you like and subscribe. Also, if you have questions, you want to continue the conversation, head over to our Discord server. Discord server is uh, discord.gg slash Robitech. Uh, love to have other tech and PC enthusiasts that are going to be talking about this a ton. So I'd love to get your insight and just have you be part of the community there. Lastly, we make tons of fun content uh, like uh, the, the NVIDIA Jenga or anything like that. So follow us on all the socials at Roby Tech, absolutely everywhere. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I got to go process more. My head hurts. We'll see you on the next one.